So there's a yeshiva boy, and he asked me, why is it that uh, these people, they're so connected to Yiddishkeit, but they're not connected to the organizations like Lubavitch and this. Be careful. We can go. See, I almost got the... Uh, to be careful when you come out of that slant. Oh, so anyway, there's a bunch of food trucks over here. Now, if you're a guy that's afraid to eat not kosher, so you don't get schar every time you pass a truck. There's like 13 trucks. Every truck you pass, if you're not afraid to eat not kosher, phobia-wise, naturally, you're just doing it because you know and you figured it out, then you get schar, but if you're afraid to eat not kosher, what schar do you deserve? You're just a chicken, man. You're afraid to jump off a diving board. You don't get schar for not jumping off a diving board. Understand? So anyway, this is uh. So I'll show you the trucks. Everybody, um. So we'll talk about JLI classes, but in, in a quick synopsis: these people came from the times of the pogroms. They didn't come here um, like, like this Fardim who came with millions of dollars in cash from Iraq and they landed at the airport from Baghdad and they were buying real estate in a minute. These people, the Ashkenazim came, they had nothing and they started from scratch. So they know about the pogroms and they know that when the peasants were hungry, that's when they would get attacked. The pogroms, clearly it wasn't a bunch of, uh, you know, the, 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 the squires and all these rich guys landowners would send the hungry peasants, but the squires themselves wanted to just continue living their luxury and having their gate around, and uh, they wanted to go golfing all day. So that's the synopsis, but I want to get to the JLI and Jewish philosophy. So these guys, this is a Brentwood Country Club. Here's, I'll give you a tour of all the trucks. If you have a few bucks, they give you uh, food. Anyway, so, um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the menu. Oh, sure. Yeah. Just beef. I like beef. What do you like? Uh, beef. What? You like uh, bean burrito? Bean and cheese burrito? Or what do you like? Uh, beef in the wrap. The, the, what is this, beef? Uh, yeah, we can have a... Uh, this is burrito. Uh -huh. This is breakfast burrito. I'll have a breakfast burrito. Do you want a breakfast burrito? Yeah, I'm not... I don't eat like everybody, like uh, the foods that everybody eats. I, I like I, I like a soup in the morning. You know, I don't like the bacon and eggs. Do you like with everything? With everything. Burrito, con todo. Yes. Yeah. Con todo. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so there's the, the country club. First of all, here's all these trucks, but I always go for the first truck. The first truck is... Hashgacha Pratis. If you skip the first thing you meet, like the first girl you meet, that's Hashgacha Pratis. If you say no to her, then you're on your own. God doesn't give you any blessings. So the first truck I take, and the, you know, if you have a few bucks, they let you eat for free. So, uh, so then, um, ah, so let me show you what's going on over here. Always look in the positive. Never look for Chazer, Reb Nachman and, and all the Chesidosh, Rebbe's would say, always look for the positive. Don't look for, oh, this is chazer, this is this. There's chazer in the, the knife, the cut. Always look, where's the beef? Where's the rice? Where's the bread? Where's the rabbanu shlelem? Where's the sun shining? So anyway, the Rambam, um, so the Rambam, right? Oh, I was biking, man. So the Rambam at his time had many difficulties, not only with his uh, guide to the perplex, which is Jewish philosophy, but also with the Mishnah Torah, which is, Basically like a Shulchan Aruch in his time. He's codifying the Gemara. Many copied him later, but at the time they burnt it. So one guy, I um, uh, forgot his name. I'll put it in a link below. When he burnt the Rambam's uh, books, he burnt the guide actually, even though they were fighting the Mishnah Taita. Because the guide was philosophy, it wasn't Taita. As a matter of fact, the guide led many people to become secular, many people to break Shabbos and eat treif. Not to become reform, but to break Shabbos when it's convenient and necessary and logical to break Shabbos and to eat treif when it's logical to eat treif. And, um, and to uh, break... Uh, oh, these are, I thought I was the only vice over here eating, but you see how these people come. So, um, because, because in the guide, basically, he says what he couldn't say. Uh, clearly, because the simple people, they hear a little bit, they're not educated, and they get angry right away. And immediately, everything that the, the Rambam would say is automatically treif, because he said that it's okay, let's say he concluded that it's okay to eat kosher, uh, eat not kosher, when, you know, because it's only a, a, a practice. 
So what, what, um, the Rambam saw Judaism as a, a belief that inside the cosmos it, it, there's a, there's something out there in the universe that cares about us. There's, it's more than just you're not alone and you're, and you're born and die and it's a sad story. He saw it as more of a, a more of a way to look and, and see uh, meaning to, to this meaningless universe. That's how he saw Yiddishkeit as. And in the story, uh, um, it's uh, very um, interesting because in the story of uh, early stories of, of the Torah, it's about such things, such cases of, of, of people uh, meeting good things and, and good stories, outcomes, you know, uh, uh, looking for, for uh, Shidduch, for uh, Rivka, finding it, you know. It's not a story about a girl that didn't find the Shidduch and she suffered and she stayed single. It's a story about an aim for happiness. So uh, anyway, I'll continue after I get the food. So he, um, the guy who burnt the books from the Rambam, he regretted it and he, because he took it as a sign from Shemayim when the French were burning um, the, Ram, the Gemaris in a fire. He saw a big pile of fire, they're burning the Gemaris and he saw, wow, look what, he took it as a sign from God. The funny thing is, the question begs, what, he didn't, he couldn't use his own logic and think, is it the right or wrong thing to burn someone's books? Uh, a, a rabbi's books that he wrote, uh, for what reason? Just for thinking, for giving people a way to think. Philosophy is a way to think and to break things down, understand why, why we do things. So uh, it's funny that he needed a fire and something emotional to make him think. An emotional situation happened. Sometimes that's all we have for some people who don't have any logical, as Rambam speaks about people who don't have any uh, logical capabilities. So they have to use, um, uh, uh, only emotional things make them do the right thing. Like a guy who hates his family and then sometimes there's a wedding and it's a happy time and then he, he changes his heart. But he can't think like, why are you being cruel to begin with? What's your reasoning? So, um, so anyway, the, the Rambam uh, uh, in his, uh, he, the Rambam says, later, in later generations, they're going to accept it anyway. And that's how it works with all of Jewish history. Basically, everyone that was considered um, doing the wrong thing, later on, it was accepted. Like Kaidach, he said to Moshe, look, I, why can't I be a Rebbe? Today, I have Rebbes all over the place. There are a bunch of Kaidachs. If you believe, like, let's say, in the, in the Ukrainian tzaddik, the Rebbe from uh, the, the Melch HaMashiach from Brooklyn, um, then you, you, uh, it has that Russian taste to it, where nobody else is allowed to be uh, 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 also a Nasi Adar. So you have that flavor, that, that, that old-fashioned thing that was already uh, done away with, you could bring it back, but only to uneducated youth in a yeshiva system. It never works on an educated Jew, or a strong Jew, or a person with integrity. Uh, it only works with lots of young kids that know how to scream very loud. So, um, but you have that flavor come back again, but that, but as we see, Kairach is, it, we had people who always was able to set up shop somewhere else. It wasn't, it was okay. It didn't hurt the, the soul of Judaism. So anyway, that was the, what the, the synopsis. So now with the JLI course, they discussed the Rambam and they said that the time wasn't ready for the Rambam. At the time, JLI says at the time, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of loaded thing where you have teachers teaching it and students learn it, but doesn't make. But how does it make any sense? If it wasn't ready at the time then, then why don't we learn about the Rambam now? And the answer is we are. You're learning about it right now. 